right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back for another edition of Grateful Sundays. Now, y'all know, uh, or for those who don't, uh, I reacted to um, the uh, Grateful Dead movie. It was like two hours, 15 minutes, and I had some audio issues, so I wasn't uh, able to upload that. Um, disappointed, but I really enjoyed it. You know, I did ex get to experience it. Um, a lot of behind the scenes footage. It was really, really cool to, to see that. I just wish I could have uploaded that for you guys, but it's all good, man. Uh, so I'm here on the Watch Mojo channel and they have this video. It's like six minutes, 37 seconds. Uh, it says the history of the Grateful Dead. Now, I know it's probably a lot of stuff in here that they might be leaving out. I don't know if you guys seen this. Uh, I just want to check this out, uh, see how far back they go. Um, but again, I appreciate you guys coming over and watching. I don't know um, if I'm going to have any issues as far as if they're going to be playing music. I don't I don't know. But we always going to give it a shot over here first. Uh, if not, it'll be somewhere else. All right. So. Again, appreciate y'all coming over. Happy Sunday. We ain't gonna waste no more time. Shout out to all the deadheads. Let's jump right into it. They were the godfathers of the jam band. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the history of the Grateful Dead. Get in the groove and let the good times roll. We're gonna stay here to soothe our soul. Rock band The Grateful Dead formed in Palo Alto, California in 1965 Knew when that. guitarists and vocalist Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir, keyboardist, harmonica player, and vocalist Rob Pigpen McKernan, bassist and vocalist Phil Lesh, and drummer Bill Kritzman first started performing as The Warlocks. The band's long-standing association with psychedelic drugs began early on, when they became the house band for author Ken Kesey's acid tests, which were LSD-fueled parties in the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. Their concept of a new style of life unites them, and that concept is, in most cases, drawn from the drug experience. The Grateful Dead themselves acknowledge they have used LSD. After discovering another band called the Warlocks, they became the Grateful Dead, and started building on that name by playing free shows. Following a short stint with MGM, the Dead released their eponymous LP with Warner Brothers in 1967. However, the blues and psychedelic rock effort received little attention outside San Francisco. Mm. The band then continued developing their live reputation by playing events like the Mantra Rock Dance, the Monterey Pop Festival, and Woodstock. But I turned 21 in prison, They also added drummer Mickey Hart and keyboardist Tom Constantine to the lineup, while Nicky, Robert Nicky. Hunter began making lyrical contributions. Yeah. Soon, Did the Dead ever. released the highly ambitious but extremely expensive albums Anthem of the Sun and Aoxamoxoa. These records showcase their fondness for jamming and experimentation, as well as a psychedelic sound that spanned pop, rock, folk, blues, and country. I rang the silent bell beneath a shower of pearls in the eagle, wing palace of the queen, Chani. The band's talent for improvisations and varied song interpretations was best captured on their multiple live compilations and the recordings taped by Deadheads throughout the years. 1969's Live Dead was considered one of their absolute best. Though a drug bust in early 1970 put a damper on things, the Dead found chart success oh. when Working Man's Dead and American Beauty charted within the top 30 that same year. We were a live touring band, traveling America six months of the year. It was always difficult for us to adapt to the limitations of the studio. 
The Grateful Dead soon added keyboardist Keith Godshow and backup vocalist Donna Jean Godshow Donna. to the team, while John Perry Barlow started writing lyrics. And despite Pigpen's alcohol-related death in 1973, the dead marched on. After the colossal summer jam at Watkins Glen Festival, they finally found commercial success Mickey, with their Mickey. own label with the jazz-tinged Wake of the Flood and the acid rock-based From the Mars Hotel. They also distinguished themselves by using their massive wall of sound audio That's system during live to. performances. Mid-decade, the Grateful Dead went on a two-year hiatus, while members concentrated on side projects, though the studio LP Blues for Allah was released in 1975. They resumed touring the following year, and in 1977, they dropped the more symphonic and less freeform studio album Terrapin Station via Arista Records. Late in the decade, Keith and Donna Jean Godshow were replaced by keyboardist Brent Midland. Don't you cry, try your last song. Following 1978's Shakedown Street, hey. The Grateful Dead only came out with one studio album in the early 1980s, Go to Heaven. Though a few live compilations were released, the band instead concentrated on touring. Right. After a health scare forced Garcia to curb his drug use, their next studio album was only unveiled in 1987, but it was worth the wait. In the Dark became the band's first and only top 10 effort, and spent were as present as ever on the touring circuit. Unfortunately, 1989's Built to Last was the group's final studio record. The next year, Midland died from a drug overdose. With keyboardist Vince Welnick and pianist Bruce Hornsby as his Hornsby. replacements, the band slowly got back on the road. After another health scare in 1992, Garcia died of a heart attack while in drug rehab three years later. The band then retired in 1995, but they remained in the public consciousness through various releases, including the Dix Picks concert series and merchandise sales. Surviving members continued making music together and separately, with notable projects being The Other Ones, The Dead, and Further. Though originally categorized as psychedelic rockers, the Grateful Dead essentially spearheaded the jam band. By bringing thousands of deadheads together through their unique musical style and transcendental live shows, the Grateful Dead altered the history of rock music for the better. I bid you good night, good night. Thank you. There's a lot of stuff in there I knew and a lot I didn't know. Uh, don't know if you guys have ever seen this video or um, how accurate it is to you guys remembering everything that went on. But, uh, I think I'm gonna check out another one, another video. Like I said, I wish I could have uploaded that two hour Grateful Dead movie reaction for y'all, but it was just horrible, um, the audio. But it's all good, man. I, at least I got to experience it. But uh, appreciate you guys coming over. Like I said, I don't know what's gonna happen because the music is in here. You just never know, you never know. Just trying to give a fair warning. All right, but uh, I am going to check out this other video. Um, keep you guys entertained for this Sunday. So, again, hopefully you guys will stick around. So, appreciate all the love and support. Shout out to all the deadheads out there. See y'all in the next one. Peace out.